If you want to get a hold of us during the program, you can certainly do that by giving us a call at 1-800-927-SHOW. That's 1-800-927-SHOW, 1-800-927-7469. Note that number will still be open and available throughout our off-season. More information on that in segment four, as well as our Email address, gardentalkradio at gmail.com will also be available. Anytime you've got a question, gardentalkradio at gmail.com. And uh, whether you're listening to us on one of the 15 radio frequencies that are broadcasting our program here in 2021, through a radio app, through our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, under the Season 5 tab at the top of the page, or in-studio video replay, or podcast replay, we thank you. For that, we're going to dive right in the show and get into topic one, which is starting onions and leeks. Now, we are covering this topic not because it's ready to plant or start your onions and leeks, but because our program begins in March across the country. And typically, in most areas in the northern portions of the United States, Onions and leeks need to be started in January or 10 to 12 weeks before your average first frost or your average last frost of the year. So we want to give you the information so you can get started off right and have good leeks and onions. So take this information and apply it in a few months, a couple months. Well, like what, two, two, three months? Two and a half. Yeah. Yeah, two and a half months or so. So first of all, you need to determine what kind of onions you want to start. Where you live. Where you live. So we're not talking about like, oh, do I want to grow red or white or yellow onions? Yes, you probably want to determine that. But also, if you want to grow what's called either long day, neutral day, or midday, or short day onions. And it's not even if you want to grow them, if you want to have success. If you want an onion. (laughs) If you want an onion. So long day is for the upper portion of the United States. So long day onions are for us in the upper Midwest or just the Midwest in general, um, Pacific Northwest, areas like that, uh, uh, New England. Um, and you you kind of take, let, let's, uh, you kind of go central Illinois and draw a line to Washington, D.C., kind of in that area. Most of those areas are going to be, and, and north are long day onions. And then the middle of the portion of the United States is neutral or short, are neutral or midday onions, and the southern portion of the United States are short day onions. Now, this is all based on the number of light hours or sunlight hours the plant is receiving during that time of year. Right, and so in the upper portion of the United States, we actually have more sunlight during the summer, and so that is important to know because you might think, well, I'm in the south, so I need the long day onions. And it's it's kind of the opposite. If you try to grow a long day in a short day, if you try to grow a long day in the south, you're going to get green tops, little onions. If you try to grow a short day in the north, you're going to get green tops and little onions. Uh, when you're in that middle portion, we've got a, you know, a big listing audience in the uh, Midwest area, in the Kansas City, in that Iowa, Nebraska area. You've got to kind of figure out where you are actually located to figure out which of the onions are best, whether you need a neutral day or you are more towards the northern areas where a long day would be better. And to find out that specifically, you can do some research on your favorite search engine or call your local university extension office and they will have the answer for you, what works best for your area. And that goes for any uh, topic in regards to, to this type of thing. Right. So that's that's one thing you want to consider. So once you've um, considered that, then you want to plant them, again, 12, 10 to 12 weeks before your last average frost date, which for us is in January. No. We're, yeah. The well, last average frost date is for us in April. I mean, that's when we plant them. We would them. start them. Yeah. 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 When we start them. Um, How so do we the, start them? You want to put them in a nice potting soil mix you can do direct compost but you want something that's going to feed them because they are going to be in that container for quite three to four months yeah so you want to use something that has a slowly release fertilizer or a compost would feed them just fine now this is if we're starting from seed which we highly recommend you want to we find that you start them from seed we've had phenomenal success if you're going to get the sets or the starts those would be purchased at the time that they're about ready to go in the ground from your local independent garden center. Now, there's a difference, Holly, between sets and starts. One, in our opinion, is really good. 
if you can't do seeds, and the other one, not so much. So sets are the ones that look like little small baby onions. They're live plants. Some of them come in a a, a, a four. You know, no, a tr- that's sets are the small the, the baby, baby onions. That look like, yeah, little bulbets, and they are. They're okay to grow, but they since onions are biannual, which means that they want to put up their flower every other year, sometimes when you plant those little bulbets, you'll get a plant that flowers quite quickly, and then you're not going to get an onion. Uh, you're going to get an onion with a stalk going through of it. They're typically small uh, bulbs. They're not going to produce a – you can't store them long term because they, there's the stalk going right through the onion. Um, those are coming in the netting material that your garden center. Uh, so we would not advise to do such because they're, they've been harvested late winter, early, late fall, early winter, mid winter, bagged up. They've gone into dormancy. You've bought them, you've planted them, and now that onion's going, oh, I'm in my second year. It's time to produce seeds. Forget about anything else. Right. So that is the, the onion, um, sets. The onion starts look like a, a pack of pencils, basically. They're, they're live plants, they're whether live they're plants. bundled or in a tray that the garden center has started. Those are the second best thing instead of starting from seed if you don't have the cap- capabilities or the light or all that stuff. Those are great. Uh, and garden centers are going to have the plants, independent garden centers now, are going to have the plants, the long day or the short day or the neutral day, that will grow in your area. Now, the big box store, on the other hand, not so much because they will have long day, short day, and neutral day all in crates, all on a shelf. And uh, we went through this uh, back uh, 10 years ago. Well, probably about seven years ago, but yeah. And uh, Holly went to a big box store to get some onions, uh, and they had long day, short day, and neutral day. So we tweeted that big box store, and the big box store tweeted back and said, well, we want the consumer to pick the onion they want. Doesn't matter. I mean, they, it didn't matter to them if you were in the north and you needed a long day and you grew a short day. It was your fault because whatever you wanted that onion. So you need to know what you what is best to grow in your area. Now, there's all different types of onions, Holly. There's sweet onions, there's red onions, white onions, yellow onions, and there's shallots. And each one of them are specific to a particular type of uh, usage, basically. Yeah. So you can you can. Usually, typically, red onions are for things like eating raw, adding to sandwiches, adding to salads, etc. Good for uh, uh, red or purple are good for yeah. um, uh, onion rings. Onion rings, yeah. yeah. Um, and then yellow onions are usually used for like cooking, uh, making like uh, casseroles, what have you, canning, things like that. And then white onions are kind of in between. Right. Not that you can't use one for the other, but they're, you know, it's designed, they've been figured out that this is what works best for them. So how do we start ours? We'll go through our situation on how we start our seeds indoors. So we're typically in the middle, late January. We will get our potting mix, got a slow release fertilizer, and we will fill one gallon grow bags from rootmaker.com. You can use coupon code radio. 21 to save 15 percent on your order that coupon code may change next year so you want to get them now you can one gallon grow bags they have one to 40 40 gallon grow one to 60 gallon grow bags but one gallon grow bag we fill them and the grow bags are about eight inches tall aren't they they're about eight inches tall and about eight inches across yeah, give or take. Eight, yeah. three of those can set nicely in a 10 by 20 flat so then we take about 200 onion seeds and broadcast on the top of that grow bag we dust it with potting soil moisten it and and then we put a paper towel over top of each of them then we moisten it again what that paper towel is doing it's serving two uh jobs here one you're moistening the soil this with a little spritzer bottle like you would you know with your hair prior to putting the paper towel down just to settle the comp uh, the potting soil then you put the paper towel down, and then you can actually water, not aggressively, but you can pour water over top, and it will percolate into the soil, through the grow bag, into the tray. And that paper towel is preventing the seeds from getting blown away and disrupting them and producing a mulch material. Once that paper towel dries, it gets kind of crusty, and it produces a barrier which greatly reduces the amount of evaporation your seeds are experiencing 
compared to if they were just opened and no covering on them at all. Kind of like leaves on a garden. Right. So the paper towel helps retain that moisture. Now, and now the, when we take the paper towel off. We take it off when, when they start to germinate. Right. So that takes a couple of weeks, essentially. Yeah. Between a week and a half to two weeks. And so then we put them under our grow light. Happy Leaf LED grow lights. And, made in America. And you don't have to put them under the grow light until they start to germinate. Correct. So if you're like, you know. You, you don't need a grow light. You don't need a grow light either. But boy, but, oh boy, does it make a job really easy and make happy, healthy plants. But what I'm saying is that if you're like me and sometimes you thrive in chaos and you know, oh, I got to plant these onions, but I have my grow light ready or I have my area ready. Well, you can plant the onions and then you got, you know, two weeks. Right. So until you um, might want to give them some light or you do want to give them some light. So you can grow on a happy leaf grow light, which uh, is uh, an amazing tool. And I mean, we did it for years without the happy leaf, but if you have good equipment and the happy leaf will last forever, it works phenomenal. You can also do this in a, a windowsill. Right. Um, north facing window is going to be a little bit challenging. You'll get your best result in a south facing window or an east or west facing window. Now, with leaks, everything is the same. However, there is no category in which leaks have to be grown in certain geographical areas. If you've got an American flag leak, it will grow the same in Phoenix as it will in Boston, as it will in Seattle. So you can grow them. You'll start them at the same time, 10 to 12 weeks before your uh, last average frost, and then you can put them in the ground. We grew, I forget what the name of those uh, the leeks were. They were mammoth leeks. American flag. American flag. Yeah. And then we grew a, a new variety this year that was literally three inches in diameter. I don't remember what I don't remember, but either. boy, they were, they were uh, good. And leeks, the interesting part of leeks is in the United States, we are trained that you only eat the bleach part of the leek. In all other countries in the world, you eat the entire leek. The leek is edible regardless if it's white or green, and we utilize that aspect. We use the whole leek. We clean up and make sure we get all the bad leaves and the you know make it all clean and pretty, and then, then we process it, and we use the entire leek. Right. So you, you want to keep all of this in mind when you are starting your onions and leeks. And again, you want to think about 10 to 12 weeks before your last average frost date, whatever that is. Is so you figure out you go to um, your favorite search engine and type in USDA growing zone frost dates and you put your zip code and it's going to tell you this is your last average frost date and then you back that off about uh, two and a half to three months and uh, works very well if you have questions keep in mind that the email address garden talk radio at gmail dot com and the hotline one eight hundred nine two seven show is open year round. And if you go to our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com, and in the upper right corner in the search bar, put onion planting. We've got about a dozen videos on how uh, we do it and how it's done very successfully and the whole process. Right. So with that being said, um, the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you today by our sponsor, Walton's Inc. Listen, we know you care about where your food comes from. Canning, preserving fruits and vegetables is great. But what about the meat? At waltonsinc.com, you can get all the equipment, seasoning, and supplies to make sausage, jerky, and any other meat product your way to your high standards. Do you want to make snack sticks that people will actually like? Walton's created meatgistics.com, an informational site to help you make the best finished product. Walton's even has a full line of their own meat grinders, mixers, and sausage stuffers to help you go from animal to edible. Walton's Everything But the Meat, that's waltonsinc.com and meatgistics.com. Waltonsinc.com, they've got a coupon code for you, whether you're a hunter, fisherman, whatever you do, lady hunter, I don't know what the terminology of lady hunter is, um, a hunter, Just hunter, hunter. Uh, have to be genderized, and, uh, or you want <laughs> spice or anything, use coupon code GROW22, G-R-O-W, numeral 22, at checkout and save 10% off your order of orders over $50 and receive free shipping. Hey there, gardeners. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. If you like what you've seen, you can search through the channel and find full in-studio videos of the entire show. If you want to go another route, you can search for it on your favorite podcast platform by searching the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show or the gardening with joey and holly radio show and you can download it and take it with you you can check out all past seasons 
at our website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, under the radio tabs at the top of the page. We thank you for joining us. We hope you've learned and enjoyed the show, the segment, and we'll see you next time.